What types of science supplies do you have in your classroom? What should you have? What do you wish you had? Today, we're talking all about science lab equipment. Aloha, my teacher friends. I am Fleur, the face of Aloha Monday Teaching, where I help middle school science teachers be intentional, prepared, and ready, refreshed for Monday and any day. I provide strategies, resources, and encouragement um, on my website and on socials and on this YouTube channel. So be sure that you're not missing a thing. Uh, like and subscribe to the Aloha Monday Teaching channel. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm at Aloha Monday Teaching. And if you haven't done this yet, be sure you grab your free guide, Five Daily Must-Do Routines to Run Your Science Classroom Like a Pro. These are five things you should be doing um, each day, no matter what you are teaching, and that just helps you feel less stressed. Everything runs a lot smoother. Um, you can get it at www.flourstrongoli.com slash daily. All right, so um, I don't know about you, but I'm guessing we have this in common because we're teachers. Um, you love school supplies and science materials, right? Not just me, right? I love all that stuff. Um, but we, as science teachers, have so much more stuff in our classrooms than other teachers like math teachers and ELA teachers and stuff. Um, but what do we actually need to teach our curriculum? So that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to go over different kinds of materials that you should have in your classroom and then some ideas that are specific to what you might be teaching. Um, so below in the description, I've linked um, this blog post. This is where this information comes from if you like to read it. It's uh, what is the must have must have list of science lab equipment. And I've also linked some other related um, products, information, that kind of stuff below in the description. All right, well, let's get started. So first, let's talk about how to get these materials. Uh, so I have five ways to get um, to ask for materials, um, to get these materials that you might need or want in your classroom. And after I go over this, I would love to hear if you have any additional ideas, because these are just things that I've, I've done. So the first one, this is also like an order that I suggest, because um, you always want to start with what your school or your district has for you since they adopt your curriculum and your materials. So first you want to check with your district or your school. Um, most of the materials that you have are supplied in science kits, hopefully. Um, I know there's sometimes more things that you need to do certain science labs and um, activities, um, but you, you can also ask for those additional items from your school or district. Sometimes they'll have like a budget, they'll give you a purchase order so you can go buy those things. Um, if that doesn't work out, your second option is to ask companies or apply for grants. So you can, um, some companies like to donate to schools some companies will offer grants to teachers, like in my state, our power company every year or twice a year, I think, offers a grant that we can apply for. And then they'll they give us some money for our classroom for specific things that we're doing. Um, but donors choose is another idea here if you haven't used that yet. The next option is to ask your parent teacher organization. Um, they obviously they're there for teachers to help you and they want to partner with you. So they might have classroom grants or just, you know, they might be able to buy something from your Amazon wish list or something like that. Um, another option is to ask parents, but I try not, I personally, I don't like to ask my parents for much because I know they already work so hard. They do so much with their child already. Um, I know that some parents struggle or you know things like that. But I do know there are some parents who are so willing and just want to help. So when you do ask parents for help, I would ask for lower cost items, things they can get at the grocery store, um, or things 
that they can get from your Amazon wish list. I would stick to those kinds of items when you're asking parents for help or donations. And finally, the last resort is using your own money. I have learned over the years how to use less and less of my own money. Yes, I still use my own money, but not like I did my first what, 10 years of teaching. Oh my gosh, I spent so much money on my classroom. Um, so to me, this is like a last resort is using your own money. All right, so let's get to the materials. I've broken this up into categories. Uh, so we've got safety equipment, measuring tools, glassware and lab equipment, grocery store items and consumables, and then curriculum specific items. So in your science classroom, you should have some lab safety equipment. Now, if you don't, there's always ways to improvise or you can you know, ask your district for this stuff because you should have certain things. Now, some science labs are equipped with a safety shower and an eye wash station. I know not every classroom has that. So if you don't, I would just use your sink and train your kids what that's for. Like still teach these things, um, even if it's not in your classroom, but um, use other items to replace it, like the sink and other things that um, include safety items. Other safety items that are included would be a fire extinguisher, uh, a fire blanket, a first aid kit, safety goggles, and maybe like gloves or, you know, aprons, that sort of stuff. The next category is measuring tools. So some measuring tools you could have in your classroom include like just rulers, uh, meter sticks, you might have balances, like a triple beam balance, some scales, protractors, thermometers, spring scales, if you teach that. So those are some ideas for measuring tools you should have in your science lab. Glassware, glassware and other lab equipment. So this is the fun stuff where it's like, ooh, we're doing science and kids, especially when they first come to middle school, they get super, super excited to use these things. Obviously you should teach them the safety and how to use them properly. But um, now graduated cylinders and that can be used in measuring also, but you want your graduated cylinders. So I got my, this one's plastic, but it's very nice. Um, so you have graduated cylinders, beakers, flasks, um, let's see, test tubes. And then with that, you want to make sure you have the safety items that go with those, such as beaker tongs, test tube racks, test tube cleaners, test tube clamps. Other science lab equipment you might have are um, droppers or pipettes like these. So you might have those. You might have corks, rubber stoppers, funnels. Let's see what else. Um, magnets, trays to hold everything, plastic tubs, like for water or whatever, those kinds of things. And a lot of this might come with your kits also. All right, grocery store items and consumables. So these are things that you can buy at the grocery store, at Walmart, Target, that kind of places, those kinds of places. Some of these might even be in your science kits, like because they're lab specific. So let's go over just a few examples. So paper or cloth products, these include like Paper towels, plates, bowls, coffee filters, cheesecloth, and then your papers, your line paper, graph paper, white colored paper, cardstock construction paper. It includes like string for different things, yarn. Um, plastic items include Ziploc bags, clear cups. Personally, I like these clear cups this size, and plus they're really, really clear. I love these plants. Um, plastics, plastic spoons to stir, straws, plastic wrap, gloves, just the either the food handling gloves or the latex or non-latex gloves. Uh, let's see, liquid products. So corn syrup, dish soap, oil, corn syrup, vinegar, food coloring, water, iodine. You might need those kinds of things. Food items include baking soda, salt, maybe some cornstarch. Um, kitchen items like toothpicks, popsicle sticks, foil, wax paper, long skewer sticks, all those things. And finally, school supplies, glue sticks. I don't know about your classroom, your kids in your classroom, but do you go through a lot of glue and pencils? 
Me too. If you have suggestions on how to not go through it so fast, let me know. <laughs> uh, let's get back. Liquid glue, masking tape, scotch tape, markers, crayons, colored pencils, and scissors. All right. Now for specific curriculum specific items. So depending on what you teach, you might need additional items. So let's just go over just a few examples and ideas um, for biology or life science, microscopes. Um, you need the slides for the microscopes, agar and pe petri dishes. Uh, you might also want models of cells or body systems, posters. For chemistry, the periodic table, various chemicals, Bunsen burners. For earth science, you might need clay, dirt, some examples like actual fossils or rocks and minerals, models and maps of earth surface or the ocean floors. For physics, objects that move like balls or cars, ramps or materials to create ramps, um, batteries, wires, magnets, light bulbs. And if you teach space, you might want some styrofoam balls, flashlights, a globe, posters, um, models. So just think about those things for what you are teaching. And again, some of this might come with your science kit, so you may not even have to ask for, for these materials. All right, so a science classroom needs a lot of materials and equipment. Um, most districts will or schools will supply these materials in your science kits um, that are suited for your curriculum. But if there's something that you need and you don't have yet, just ask for it. Start with your school or district, apply for grants, um, ask your parent, teacher, organization, um, ask parents before using your own money. Um, but again, remember when you're asking parents, just refrain from asking for costly items, just stick to things that are easy to obtain from the store or your um, Amazon wish list. So, and remember, you'll need like, you'll need safety equipment, measuring tools, glassware, science lab equipment, consumables and school supplies, and then things that are related to what you teach. So your turn, what are your must haves in your science classroom? What are some things that you wish you had? Like, it would be so much fun to have this. What are those things? I know for me this school year, I was able to get through Donors Choose. Um, it's a camera that goes on the microscope and you can take pictures of what you are looking at under the microscope and you can project it on your screen. It's really cool. So that was one of my wish list items that I was able to get this school year. So what are what are your things? Leave it in the comments. I would love to hear what you wish was on um, in your science lab. So before you go, I just want to point out a couple things so you can check out these things. I've got a blog post that is all about setting up your classroom, which includes um, organizing all of those materials. So at these links are below. I have a product for science lab equipment gets to get students using them correctly and uh, measuring and looking at the microscope and stuff. And for science lab safety also, just to make sure that they are being safe in your classroom. So just remember to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything. Um, and then find me at Aloha Monday teaching on all the socials. And then finally get your guide if you haven't done it yet um, at flairstronggoalie.com slash daily for those five things you should be doing each day, no matter what you're teaching to make your classroom run smoother. And then you will just be less stressed. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you soon. Aloha.